Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Inesa Bionteneja And today I would like to explain to you about one of the intensive material in social music Yes, this is about Lima Fanka, Virgin, and one more is about Creo So, let's check this out okay. So, this is my mind mapping about Lima Fanka, Virgin, and Creo So, let's see here The first is about Lima Fanka Okay, what is Lima Fanka? Lingua Franca is a breathing weed that is used by people to interact with the others where they have different mother tongue you. And then uh, UNESCO also defined a lingua franca as a language which is used habitually by people whose mother tongue views are different in order to facilitate, facilitate communication between them. So, here lingua franca is a language that uses by people who have different language they use it for fulfilling the need of communication because right now the need of the um, trade or maybe travel and so many activities that uh, need lingua franca as the British language so uh, here we take a sample of uh, one of lingua franca in this world It is English. Yes, English is become a lingua franca in the world because it is used worldwide and almost all the people in this world understand this language. In fact, do you know about uh, the use of language in this world? Exactly, uh, there are 1.5 billion people in this world that understand this language. So, This why English is become the lingua franca around the world. Okay, next about the regional, regional level and national level of lingua franca. So, of regional lingua franca, the first is French language in Africa. Yes, uh, in Africa exactly there are different language that use in Africa, but the dominant language in there is French, so it is used as lingua franca. Exactly, in Africa, you do, there are so many uh, separated states, but the dominant uh, of uh, place that in Africa is used French. So, the lingua franca uh, of regional level in Africa is French. Then example of national lingua franca is Indonesian. Yes, exactly in Indonesia there are so many tribes in this country. Uh, for example, I'm um, Sundanese, then my friend is Javanese, or maybe uh, there are also Batamese and so many more tribes in this country. When we talk each other, exactly we don't use our Uh, regional language because my friends and also the other do not understand about the language so here we use Indonesian as national lingua franca where the people have understood about this language okay next uh, we will talk about pidgin yes what is pidgin Pidgin is a language that is used by people who are not the native speakers. It is no one's first language, but it is a contact language. It uses simple vocabulary from dominant groups, language, and a simplified form of native language. Okay, Pidgin arises when one group of people is dominant over another group of people, and the less dominant group needs to learn to communicate with the dominant group yes this is right uh, because uh, the dominant here uh, has the important roles to control the, the language in the uh, group then it can be pidgin if there are at least three different languages one of them must be clearly dominant yes this is based on we know 1971 okay uh, how if 
we just uh, one language uh, is this there's no edit this cannot be a pigeon because it's just one language now the pigeon here uh, they at least have three different limit so it can be a pigeon next pigeon is used as static teeth it means only used for certain function but sometimes we could become extended yes used in social life so the pigeon i know i think uh, it become extended use because there are so many uh, pigeon in this world such as uh, talk pisin in Papua New Guinea that has been uh, used as uh, in their social life now we go to example here there are pigeon Chinese English was used was used mainly by speakers of different Chinese language and talk is usually used as any foreign language among speakers of many different languages in Papua New Guinea. Okay, next we go to Creole. Yes, the pronunciation is Creole. Okay, what is Creole? Creole is a language that survives and becomes the native language of the next generation. On the other word, the Creole is often defined as a pigeon that has become the first language of a new generation of English speakers. Yes, Creole is a pigeon that survives. And then, the children of the people who use pigeon uh, admit the pigeon as their first language, so it becomes Creole uh, of them. Okay, then, uh, based on Alan Chickson, 1994, page uh, 3177 says, Creoles arise when pigeons become mother language, mother tongue use. Yeah, so they admit it as uh, uh, their mother tongue use because their parents use it and uh, teach it to them. So they feel that. Pigeon is their mother tongue use. Okay, uh, so next, some Creoles are based on English, such as the American Creole and some other more. But uh, then there are some Creoles also are based on French, such as Haitian Creole, which has 12 million native speakers, so with so many. It's a great. Then, uh, however, there are also some Creoles based on Spanish, such as Javacano in Philippines, and so many other Creoles from other parent language that can be learned. Okay, then we go to the uh, example of Creoles. Oh, I think it's very, very interesting to learn. How different are this Creoles language? from their parent language we take example of the Bisama language that Bisama language is English best Creole that is spoken in Vanuatu in English if we say this is my house but in Bisama uh, the sentences become Ham ya house belong me uh, if we heard about this sentence, the pronunciation is uh, look, looks like uh, English pronunciation like Ham ya house. House is just like house uh, that that has some meaning with in English, and then below me, below me is same pronunciation with English. So. It's still uh, English pronunciation, I think, in Bisama. So, maybe the difference is just about the grammar and then the syntax, I think. Then, uh, there are example. There is example about topic scene language. 
Yes, the cuisine language uh, is a language that based on English. Yes, Creole. English based Creole that spoken in Papua New Guinea. Okay, uh, the example is in English we say I'm sorry, but in talk cuisine we say me sorry. It's just yes, it's different grammar and then uh, different. Uh, but pronunciation is same, I think. Yes, it is just the grammar here that different, and the uh, how to write me m i, not m e, such as in English. Okay, then uh, we go to the speakers of Creoles. Exactly, speakers of Creoles. Like speakers of pigeon, may they uh, they will feel that they speak something less than normal because yes when they when they uh, watch or maybe they see the other language such as French or maybe English uh, why they are so different with the language so they feel that they are uh, uncomfortable um, not uncomfortable. They just feel, uh, they feel that they less than normal with the usual language in other country. Yes. Okay, the last is the important question I think. Does every pigeon become a creole? Um, I think pigeon doesn't always become creole. Because it depends of the people that use the language. If the people, uh, if the people realize that the language here, the language of pigeon here is their first language, so it will become the Creole. But if they just admit that the pigeon is just their second language, so it cannot be a Creole. Because uh, their mother tongue here is their uh, language in their country so, yeah. so it will still be a uh, pigeon hello thank you very much for watching this video if you have any question please comment below and don't forget to subscribe comment and like thank you see you later